Alrighty, and welcome to lesson one. Today we're going to start off really simple and kind of build an idea that we'll be able to kind of stretch out over the rest of this course. We're actually going to just start with the real number line. We're going to build a lot of things based off of this. Um, first, the, the first question we should have is, well, what is the real number line? That's just an array of number or uh, an axis of numbers. And we can count by twos or fives or ones or whatever, but it, it goes forever to the left and right. That, that's not a negative. That's not supposed to be there. But, um, but anyways, let me get rid of that. But it counts in the positive direction to the right. I'm going to count by ones. One, two, three, four, five. And it goes forever in this direction. So this is the positive side and the idea is numbers that are further to this right here are bigger bigger numbers now to the left as we go to the left numbers are getting smaller and this is when we start dipping into the negative numbers when we get below or smaller than zero and so they count backwards in this way forever of course they go on forever <clears throat> All right. Now the number line, it may seem like, okay, well, big deal. It can be useful for a lot of things that you may not even think about using it for. But before we even use it much, let's make sure you understand how to graph on it or plot numbers on it. So, for instance, we'll just take it one at a time. Graphing whole numbers on it or integers, or what these are called, may not be that difficult. Negative 3, well, let's just go back here to 1, 2, 3, back in the negative direction. That's not difficult. 0 is not difficult. But the fractions and decimals may not be the easiest thing. So let's look. Negative 1 half. Well, I know that negative 1 half is the same thing as negative 0.5. And that's not quite as negative as negative 1. It doesn't, it, it's in between 0 and negative 1. So we're not going to be perfect, we're just going to put a dot there. I guess I probably need to label what these are. That one's negative 3, this one's negative 1 half. Of course, that one's already labeled at 0. Now 2 and a half. 2.5, well that's 2 and a little bit more in between 2 and 3. Because it's 2.5. Okay. Now, we're going to ask you, we're going to mainly give you fractions so your job will be if you're not sure where it belongs on the number line just use a calculator and do it as a division one divided by two is 0.5 and then that'll tell you where it's between what numbers it's between so this is probably a better example to try this out so like negative five over two let's label some numbers negative 5 over 2 where is that going to fall well if I do a bit of scratch work and I take my calculator and I say 5 divided by 2 and or negative 5 divided by 2 is going to tell me that is negative 2.5 or 2 and a half so it's you go negative 2 and then a half in between two tick marks okay that's negative 5 over 2 so this is something you'll be asked to do, is just show us that you can plot some numbers on a number line. Let's see, negative 2 is easy enough. That's on a tick mark. 3 halves. Could we do 3 halves? The answer is yeah, it's not that bad. 3 divided by 2, if I put it in a calculator, is 1.5. So I know that means I'm going to go 1 and a half more, so almost in, be in between 1 and 2. So that's 1.5. And then I think I have another whole number here which is easy to graph it for. I know, not anything super challenging. The things people will get wrong are graphing these fractions, especially the negative ones. So be really careful with how you do that. Okay. Now, things that I told you these are a little more useful than just to look at or plot numbers on. Um, because we know that bigger numbers are always to the right and smaller numbers are always to the left, some people struggle in comparing numbers, but if you can visualize them or graph them on a number line, you know which one's the bigger number and which one's the smaller number. You can also use this to visualize adding and subtracting, um, because I know a lot of people dislike adding and subtracting negative numbers. 
but it's actually quite simple to visualize it on the number line and then you never get confused <laughs> or you don't have to get confused that's just all that says um let's see so let's look at these and see if we can figure out if these statements are true or false negative six is less than negative eight if you forget what the symbols are you need to kind of refresh yourself on that if it looks like a little arrow pointing to the left then it's a less than you could also go third grade on it and say it eats the bigger number so is this true or false is negative six smaller than negative eight well why don't we visualize it or we could actually draw it and we don't have to just visualize in our head a number line so if I have zero negative one negative two three four five whoops six seven eight so this is negative six and this is negative eight is negative six less than negative eight that means it would need to be on the left of negative eight because as you go to the left we get lesser or smaller right well no it's not it's to the right it's bigger than negative eight so this is not true this is an example of one that a lot of people miss a lot of people get that wrong and this is a, a spot where the um, number line can help you visualize these things so for instance is zero bigger than or equal to greater than or equal to negative five well here's zero here's negative five is it bigger yeah zero is absolutely bigger it's to the right so this one is true I guess I should write true or false not X's and check marks but you know what I mean and then is this one true is negative three less than negative three well one two three here's negative three negative three is not to the left of negative three it's in the same spot it's equal it's not less than so this one this one's false okay so there you go so you can use it to compare especially these harder ones right here on the worksheet uh, I'll have you work you will have some of these that I just have blanks and you fill in the correct less than or greater than and so just kind of put them on a number line and you can see whichever one's further to the left is smaller whichever one's further to the right is larger okay now before we dive into using this thing for addition and subtraction let's talk about absolute values okay we have a few more topics to talk about actually before we get to adding and subtracting absolute values what are absolute values they're just um <clears throat> the measure that a number is its distance from zero okay that's a simpler definition that's a wordy one a textbook definition the easy way to think of an absolute value is just your distance from zero prefer that definition a lot less wordy distance from zero so if you're on a number line let me see if I could draw a, a better nicer prettier number line I'm not the best artist but no matter if your number is negative or positive so say negative three how far away is this from zero one two three it's three away from zero it doesn't matter if you're negative or positive distance is always positive an absolute value is a distance <clears throat> okay and so that's why we say the absolute value of negative three is positive three because the distance from negative three to zero is three so let's scroll down and let's actually look at some some examples oh I didn't know that was my first example that I have written in there but the absolute value of negative three so these symbols right here if you didn't know it these two big bars mean absolute value so whatever's inside there we look at how far away it is from zero one two three it is three away from zero two and a half here's two and a half how far away is that from zero one two and a half so anything in there that's positive comes out positive now look at this one this has a minus sign or a negative sign on the outside if it's on the outside it's not part of the absolute value we ignore it for a second so whatever this is this negative is still going to be floating there okay so what is the absolute value of negative nine well it's nine away from zero and then this negative just stays out front so the answer is negative nine okay don't be tricked by negatives outside the absolute values I have you practice that a lot on the worksheet as well 
All right. Now we have two more concepts to discuss before we get on to some, some arithmetic here. And those concepts are opposites and reciprocals. I think everybody knows what an opposite is, quite simply. When we're talking about opposites, we're talking about opposite signs. And when I mention signs, what I mean is negatives and positives. So for instance, the opposite of negative uh, 23 is positive 23. It, it's not a hard concept. You just change the sign. If, if this is negative, then the opposite is the positive. If this is positive, then the opposite is the negative. It's not real hard. The one that is not as familiar is a reciprocal. Now, both these ideas are very important. I will actually use them over the next few lessons. Actually, I will use opposite today at the end of this lesson. But reciprocals is something I will use, um, I believe, just next lesson, lesson two, or lesson three, actually. No, I think lesson two is when I'm going to use it. Reciprocals is an, an, a very important idea. We'll also use this throughout the course. What the, the root word here is like the same as in the phrase or the word to reciprocate. And what that means is kind of to move back and forth. But in this case, what we're thinking of is uh, to flip the fraction or flip. Um, I'm going to put in parentheses fraction. So that's all a reciprocal is. So if I ask for the reciprocal reciprocal of 3 over 5, the reciprocal of this just means take it and flip it, reciprocate it. So we flipped it. That's all a reciprocal is, is where you flip a fraction. So if this were uh, negative 3 over 5, the reciprocal is, it's still negative, it's just 5 over 3. Because I didn't say the opposite, I said the reciprocal. All we're doing is flipping the fraction. Kind of an interesting question is, how do I flip a whole number? Like say 6. How do I get the reciprocal of that? Well, it's actually not difficult. I just need to think of this as a fraction. So is there anything I could divide by and not change the value? And the answer is yeah, absolutely. The number 1. 6 divided by 1 is 6. It's it's not, this is not any different sticking a 1 underneath it. I could use this trick several times throughout the semester where if I need a fraction, I can just put a 1 on the denominator. So then this gives me something to flip. What's the reciprocal of 6 over 1? Well, the reciprocal recip is 1 over 6. That's not too difficult. Now this leads us into one other little thing that we might be picky on. What if I ask you for the reciprocal of 1 over, um, it doesn't matter, 5? Well, you're going to flip it, and you're going to tell me that's 5 over 1. Well, this is not proper to leave it as 5 over 1, because 5 over 1, 5 divided by 1 is just 5. Okay, so these are kind of annoying, because they're not as straightforward as the fractions where you just flip them. If they're a whole number, you have to turn it into a fraction, then flip it. If when you flip it, it has one on the bottom, you have to turn it back into a whole number or an integer. Okay. So kind of as a way of an example, you just have this big chart to fill out. Not big. I guess it's not that big of a chart. But can you find the reciprocals and opposites? It shouldn't be that hard. If we hit up opposites, the opposite of negative 5 is positive 5. The opposite of positive 2 over 5 would be negative 2 over 5. The opposite of negative 7 over thirds would be positive 7 over thirds. So opposites are easy. Reciprocals, let's do the easy ones first. 2 over 5, the reciprocal would be 5 over 2. Negative 7 over 3, the reciprocal would be negative 3 over 7. How would I reciprocate negative 5? Well, I'd have to make it a fraction. And then when I flip it, to be negative 1 over 5. So that's how we do opposites and reciprocals. When we're going to use these, those are important terms to remember. Okay. Um, one other application of trying to do opposites is if I gave you that x was equal to some weird, nasty fraction, 
and I ask you to find negative x. Some people read this not as negative x, but some people say, ah, that's the opposite of x. Okay, opposite of x. So the opposite of x. Well, x is negative 14 over 5. What's the opposite of this? Well, negative x would be positive 14 over 5. Okay. If positive x is this number, it doesn't matter what it is, negative x will just be the opposite of it. That's the point we're trying to make. This wasn't really on the test last year or any of the years past, but people really have a difficult time with negative x. There's a lot of answers throughout the semester that came out to negative x, and they wouldn't flip the sign on their answer. So it messed a lot of people up. So we're kind of putting it in the lesson. This is actually like a question on the test. So just something to know. If I ask you, hey, what's minus x or negative x or opposite of x? Well, take your x and find the opposite. Okay, so now we actually get on to addition and subtraction. Okay, I'm going to try to go this quick through this quickly because you are allowed a calculator in class. Uh, we used to do no calculators for test one, but now, now they're here. But I just wanted to make sure you understand this because if I ask you something simple and you should be able to do it in like half a second, I really don't want you to reach for a calculator and waste all your time typing it in. Um, so a lot of people struggle with negatives and positives, adding and subtracting negatives and positives. And so I'm going to show you, we could do this on the number line really easily. Now I don't draw a number line when I do these. I visualize where I am, but we could. The first number is where you're starting. So if I start at positive 2, and then you either add or subtract the number over here. So I'm adding positive 5. So adding positive 5 would mean that I move 5 in the positive direction. That's 3, 4, 5. need a little bit longer number line, but... And I probably need numbers to be able to tell where I end up. So I end up at 7. Yes, I know you all know 2 plus 5 is 7, but I'm showing you how you can use the number line to visualize. At least I hope everybody knows 2 plus 5 is 7. What if I get into negatives then? Well, this is still where I start. Negative 2. 1, 2, negative 2. Because I should write the rest of the numbers. And maybe make this a little bit longer in case I need it. And I'll do this one in green. So we still start at the first number. And then we're going to add negative 5. Well, adding negative 5 means I'm going to go backwards 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. So I end up at negative 7. Some people remember a rule for this. If you're adding things that are the same sign, you just add the numbers and take their sign. So 2 and 5 are both positive. 2 plus 5 is 7. If they're both positive, this is going to be positive. 2 and 5 are both negative. 2 plus 5 is 7. This is going to be negative. I hate memorizing rules, though. I'd rather understand the concepts. And this is a good visual of what's happening here. Um, how about this? Notice I give you two now that are opposite signs, starting at 2 and moving in the negative 5 direction. I'm going to do that one in red, so it would be starting at 2 and moving back 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That gives us negative 3. Start at negative 2. Let's do this one in purple, because I'm running out of colors. And move plus 5, so it would be in the positive direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We end up at positive 3. Um, you have a calculator, so you don't have to stress over this, but I do want you to understand what I mean by visualizing on the number line kind of where you're moving to. Um, the rule, if you're a rule memorizer, some people are memorize these rules, where if they are opposite signs, you take the two numbers and subtract them, 5 minus 2 is 3, and you take the sign of whichever one is bigger, 2 or 5, 5 is bigger, it's negative, so this is negative. They're opposite signs, negative and positive. So take the sign of whichever's bigger. It's five, so we're going to get a, a positive. So we're going to get a positive number. Subtract them. Five minus two is three. So that's the rule, but don't focus on memorizing rules. I'd rather you have a deeper understanding of what's happening here. Okay. Um, subtraction. So I'm going to make a bold boast for this uh, first lesson: is that I could, if if we had to teach the entire course with just two operations, adding and multiplying. I don't need subtraction and I don't need division. There's a reason for that, okay? 
Because what subtraction is, is it, it is the same thing as adding the opposite. That's all that subtraction is, it's adding the opposite. And I think a lot of y'all in high school have these cute sayings like keep change change or keep change switch or those many, many sayings that you walk down a high school hallway and hear over and over again. But I can turn every subtraction into an addition. We already know how to add, so this is not that difficult. So for instance, two minus five. If I can just change this subtraction, this minus, into adding the opposite, and I told you we'd use opposites. Well, what's the opposite of positive five? Negative five. So I can change every subtraction into adding the opposite. So two plus negative five, we've already done that. Two plus negative five, it was negative three. Um, same thing here. This is a subtraction. I can change it into adding the opposite. What's the opposite of negative five? We'll call that positive five. So negative two plus positive five, that is positive three. So I don't really need any rules for subtraction because I'm just going to turn it into addition because it's going to be every subtraction it's just adding the opposite um, so uh, change the subtraction to adding the opposite that becomes positive so 2 plus 5 is 7 negative 2 minus 5 change that into adding the opposite it's the opposite of positive 5 negative 5 negative 2 minus 5 that's negative 7 so not a big deal just do practice this I have it on your worksheet for you to practice and then I got one more question what are the rules for adding in uh, multi multiplying and dividing negative and positive numbers so that's what we were covering here is negative and positives how to add and subtract them how do you multiply and divide this is actually a pretty simple rule it's all based off of ugly and pretty babies okay now I know what you're thinking we've all seen ugly babies people like to lie you've been lied to if you've been told all babies are pretty because there's plenty of ugly babies so you should see some of the babies I've seen out there just go look at people's baby pictures I mean like you know true babies they're they're quite ugly um, and there's kind of a rule in nature that that governs this and it's the same kind of rule as for multiplying and dividing negative and positive numbers okay so the obvious is if you get two beautiful people together we're gonna call them positive people and you multiply them two beautiful people they're going to have a beautiful baby okay so a a positive times a positive will give you a positive okay so this is pretty obvious what's not obvious or what's weird is this is the one freak rule of nature that if you get two ugly people together y'all all know y'all have friends that are that are that are ugly and they get together and they have babies and somehow their ugliness cancels out and they have a beautiful baby so the rule is if they are the same both beautiful or both ugly they always have a beautiful baby okay so positive times a positive is a positive negative times a negative is a positive if they are the same then it gives you a positive a pretty baby now when you get ugly babies what that means is the mommy and daddy are in different leagues so if you get a, a beautiful wife and an ugly husband I'm sorry but that baby is going to be ugly or if you get an ugly wife and a beautiful husband whoops times a positive you're going to get an ugly baby it's when the mom and dad are different that you get an ugly baby um, so if you think you look good or you think you're let's say you think your your man or woman looks good and you'll have an ugly baby you may want to look in the mirror just just a rule of nature but anyways I digress back to negatives and positives and multiplying and dividing so for instance I'll everybody knows 2 times 3 is 6 right but if I do negative 2 times 3 they're different signs so that's going to be negative 6 or likewise if I do uh, 2 times negative 3 I'm going to put it in parentheses so you don't think it's minus 3 it's times 2 times negative 3 that's also negative six because a pretty mama an ugly daddy gives you an ugly baby but if I happen to throw a negative two times a negative three ugly mama ugly daddy that's gonna be strangely somehow or that's the miracle a pretty baby and the same rules for dividing <clears throat> um, I'll talk to you more about this and I'll use that phrase reciprocal in a few lessons 
but this the rules are the same so if I take negative 12 divided by 4 12 divided by 4 is 3 a negative divided by a positive well that's a, a pretty mama an, or an ugly mama a pretty daddy that's gonna be an ugly baby it's when they're the same they're both ugly or they're both beautiful that you'll get a positive okay well that's all I have for you make sure you do my worksheet that'll be posted in blackboard every day for every lesson unless I leave you a little message saying there's not a worksheet and um, make sure you get that scanned in and sent back to me so that I can grade it and get it back to you alright awesome hope you enjoyed the first lesson I'll see you guys later